Hello Miss, today my group will be presenting and demoing our game which we have named Space Unbound. My name is Julian Kujubin and my student ID is SWE1904876. In Space Unbound, we are playing a character that is a lab experiment. This lab experiment is designed to handle highly complex problem-solving situations with its super-intelligent mind. However, the character is just one of many clones created in the lab. If the character wishes to be tagged as a successful prototype, it needs to pass a lab test given to it by the scientist. If it fails, it will be turned into scrap metal like the other prototypes who failed the experiment. The character has to go through six gruesome levels of experiment rooms where its intelligence will be tested. Each experiment room will get progressively harder as the character progresses, until the character reaches the end where it is deemed a successful prototype. Right now, we are in the main menu of the game. The main menu has a fairly simple design. It has the play button to let us hop into the game or the quick button to exit the game back into our desktop. Now. Let's hop inside. When we first enter the game, we will notice a chat bubble over here. This is a dialogue system that we have implemented to help users track their progress in the storyline and in the game. You may take your time to read the dialogue. Keep in mind that there is a dialogue for each room so users will not feel lost when they are playing the game. Another thing to note is the dialogue may give hints and tips or maybe advice for the player which they may find useful to help solve the room. That was the end of the first dialogue. I will now pass it to Yung Hao to go through the tutorial and more mechanics of the game. Thank you Julian and my name is Ayung Hao. My student ID is SWE1904853. So now I'm going to start with the basic mechanics in this game. So as we can see, there's a big banner here indicates the instruction to how can we play this game. And as you can see, D to walk right and A to walk left. And as we walk into a portal, we can use W to get into the next stage. So in this tutorial stage two, it is to teach users on how they can use their items in their inventory where in the bottom here, the UI is an inventory which have items inside so we can left click on the items in the inventory and left click on empty space to place it down however, we cannot place it under the ground or on player or on whatever object which is overlapping on the item so when we place it down and we can use this as a jump pad to access us to the next stage. In this stage, we have a misplaced platform here and a big banner shows us that we can use our right click to pick up the misplaced platform. And when we right click on it, it will come back on our inventory. Other than that, on our top left corner, there's a life left, which indicates how many lives we got right now, and when we hit the obstacles, which is right here, it will get deducted. When we make it to zero, we got spawned back to the previous stage. So now let's pick this misplaced platform up and use it on a proper way to go into the next stage. And this is stage 1. This is the level I designed and the concept of this level is that I want to make it easy and there's multiple way to get up to the portal. As this is just level 1 and I don't want to make it hard and player can use their creativity and the items in the inventory to utilize it to go onto the portal and I'm going to demonstrate one of the ways to get up now we are in level 2 
and I'm going to pass to Julian to talk about the concepts of this level. Thank you, Ying Hao. My name is Julian, and this is level 2, the level which I have designed. Now, before we hop into this level, let's read the dialogue. Welcome to level 2. Remember, you are only limited by your creativity and the frustrating task of trying to get used to jumping physics and timings. Very cheeky. Alright, now that we have read the dialogue, let's take a look at this level as a whole. As you can see, compared to the previous level, the number of obstacles has been increased. But because of that, I have given the player more platforms to work with so that they do not feel limited on resources. Now, there are fairly a few ways to go through this level and I will show my way of doing it. Now, as you can see here, there is a gap in between this and this platform and the most uh, the most common way would be the, for the player to put a platform down here and hop into that. But as we can see, the roof will be, the ceiling will be blocking the player's progression. So what I like to do is actually place a jump pad over here. And the player will actually have an easier time navigating, just like that. Now, for this, it may look tall, but one jump pad is enough. So actually, this level may seem like a lot, but players do not need to overthink about it, for this, for this solution at least. If they ever feel like they are in trouble, they can always right click to retrieve the platform and reuse it. Just like that. That is it for level 2. Thank you. I will now pass it to Chia Hong to talk about his part. Thank you, Julian. I'm Ang Chia Hong, and my student ID is SWE1904856. I designed the third level for our game development group assignment. The purpose of the level's design is to let the user to get familiar with the provided items, as well as test the user's analytical and critical thinking skills on how to pass the level. Let's take a look at the level design. It's quite similar to the sketch of the previous levels, but look at this area. The user definitely won't be able to pass through this obstacle to pass the level. Now, I will demonstrate how can we pass this level. That's all from my part. I will now pass to Jing Heng to demonstrate level 4. Thank you, Cha Hong. My name is Fu Jin Heng and my student ID is SWE1904854. As for the final output for our game, we have implemented some extra function and features. I will be explaining the fourth level which I have designed during developing the game. As you can see at the top left corner, we have the live count which is 3. We also have the pause menu where the game will be paused by pressing the escape key. Also, we have this dialog box by explaining each of the level in our game. We also can hear the background music while the players are playing the game. Now, I will be showing on how to pass this level and proceed to the next level. But at first, I will be clearing off this dialog box by pressing the enter key. In order to let our character to move to this position, I will be using one jump pad. To let my character to move down to this position, I will be using another jump pad. Notice that our character will be moving left and right in the mid pad. If we press the A key and the D key, be careful not to fall onto the obstacle, which is this obstacle. So, in order to let our player to move to this position and pass through the portal, I'll be using two jump pads. So, here we are with our character will be at this position. 
So if you move to this the portal by pressing W key, will be proceed to the next level. So this will be the end of my demo, and I will now pass it to Elizabeth. Thank you, Jing Xing. My name is Elizabeth Ku Mingjun, and my student ID is SWE 19048578. I'm going to explain about the level I designed for our game development assignment. This particular level, which is level 5, is much like the previous levels, where we have the obstacles and the items provided in the inventory. However, as you can notice, this level is much harder than the previous levels because we're nearing the end of the game, where we have only two levels left until the game's completion. This level will test the user's sense of timing, where they need to have a good sense of rhythm to pass through certain obstacles. It also encourages users to get creative and analytical while solving the level. I'll now demonstrate on how we can go through this level. Thank you. Now I'll pass the time to Anand. Thank you, Elizabeth. My name is Anand Madhavan, student ID SWE19048581. And we have arrived at the level that I have designed, that is the sixth and final level of the game. In this level, players will have to use all that they have learned from the previous levels to navigate through this maze that is full of traps and dead ends. Okay, so first off, players will have to take a leap of faith down this hole. They have to maneuver while in mid to avoid hitting the barbed wire at the bottom. Then, players can put down a jump pad to reach the ledge above them. They have to time their jump properly so that they do not hit the barbed wire at the corner of the ledge. Moving on, in order to avoid falling into this pit, Players can put down a crate to plug the hole and cross it safely with a jump pad. From here, it's just a simple ascent up using jump pads to the trophy. Be careful about this final trap here, you can just use a jump pad to cross it safely. Now you have your hands on the trophy. Congratulations, you have beaten the game and are now deemed a successful prototype. As a bonus, we have added a small easter egg level for the player's enjoyment. All they have to do is take this portal right here. Now, if the player wishes to quit the game, they can do so by pressing the escape key to bring up the pause menu. From here, the player can quit to the main menu or the, to the desktop. This pause menu can be brought up at any point in the game. In conclusion, Space Unbound, our 2D platformer game, challenges the player to solve puzzles, understand the game's mechanics, and think creatively. With an increasing difficulty curve, Play will ultimately feel a sense of achievement when they get their hands on the trophy in the final level. This concludes our walkthrough of the game. Thank you.